Hello everybody, my name is Michael from Polygon Island and today I'm coming with a very quick tutorial on how to add grunge maps or surface imperfections to your models. Uh, so this can be kind of confusing because there are a lot of uh, different ways you can do it um, and some don't work very good. Um, it was kind of hard for me to learn because I didn't really look up any specific tutorials. I just kind of looked up on forums and stuff. And it was telling me to plug it into bump maps and stuff, but uh, that was a while ago, and now obviously I know how to do it since I'm making this tutorial. But uh, basically, what we have here is we have this wooden floor texture. I'm using the EV render engine. You can use it in both cycles and EV; it doesn't matter. Um, I have this PBR wood floor texture. Looks pretty nice, but it's insanely unrealistic. Okay, so when you have a texture, uh, or when you have anything in real life, right? People are going to touch it, people are going to, like, spill stuff on it, people are going to, like, set things down, people are going to step on it, uh, if it's, like, a floor, and you're never going to have a floor that's clean, unless you are insanely scared of the coronavirus and carry hand sanitizer, Windex, and 404 with you everywhere, but that's besides the point. Uh, to make this texture, or any texture for that matter, more realistic, you're going to want to have surface imperfections, whether that's, like, spill marks, streaks, uh, the umprints or fingerprints uh, you're gonna want to have those so here's how to do it so if we look at our normal shader setup uh, this is the normal shader setup if you do shift T on the principal BSDF with the node wrangler add-on then you can select all your PBR textures and do that I cover that in my texturing tutorial or my PBR texturing tutorial but uh, for the most part what uh, surface imperfections are based on is this right here the roughness value so you can see normally the roughness value for the texture itself is connected to the roughness value of the principal shader and that just gives the base texture the roughness to make it to where the texture looks right and it's not like too shiny or too like dull but what we're gonna do with surface imperfections is we're gonna disconnect this and we're just gonna put this over here and we can set the, we can click this node and hit shift D to duplicate it and bring it over here and then go to this little folder icon and just go down to wherever you have your surface imperfections. I'm going to choose this one because it's just one I have on my computer. It's not really anything specific. But make sure this color space is set to non-color otherwise it'll not look right. Uh, non-color just basically means it won't contribute any color data to the texture. Um, and that's for the most part what all your other maps are except for the color texture which is sRGB. But anyway, uh, if we take this roughness, uh, which is now our surface imperfections, we can put the color into the roughness of our uh, principal BSDF. And now you can see that we have these surface imperfections all over our texture. So this wood floor texture probably isn't the best to put this on. But you can still see, like when the light hits it, you can see the marks and the uh, just different little things on the texture now um, that look like it's dirty or not clean um, and that adds a lot to the texture if you're making if you're going for realism um, not everything is gonna be clean and sparkly um, everything's just gonna be like grungy and like worn out and stuff um, that is assuming that you're going for that kind of realism if you're going for like arc viz or something then like you're probably gonna want want to make everything all clean because that's how those renders are, but this just adds a lot to textures. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can also do it with glass. I don't know if glass will show it very well, but we can try. So let's say I change this material to a glass BSDF, and I change it. I delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this. Oops. So now we just have this. Well, I don't know what's going on here, but now we just have this roughness going into the roughness of the glass. So I don't know if it'll show it, and it does actually show it. But you can see this is glass, and it has the surface imperfection. Now if I change it to cycles, might be a little bit harder to see. But you can see the glass still has these per these surface imperfections. So on glass especially, glass is really useful to have these because glass leaves fingerprints like 
you, you, you touch glass, there's going to be fingerprints. No matter what kind of glass you touch, it's going to leave fingerprints. So if you have anything with like glass in your render, um, I recommend not using a surface map like this, but something rather that's more like fingerprinty um, or maybe like a fingerprint mixed with this kind of texture. Um, just different stuff like that because it adds a lot to your texture. But that's the tutorial. I uh, hope you guys learned something about surface maps or um, surface imperfection maps. If you did, make sure to leave it in the comments below. Um, thanks, guys, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.